week we have been talking about different types of processions and how to make them unique and a little more interesting, I guess, or personalized for the families. And one of the most, I think, profound type of processions we can do is for a service member, um, most respectfully for the fire department. So I'm here with Lieutenant Jake Steele, one of my buddies, and we're just going to talk a little about uh, firemen's funerals and I'm gonna preface this with I'm probably gonna say firemen and not say firemen women and try and be all gender equal and that's not because I'm trying to disrespect so we're gonna just preface the video with that um, so Jake how many funerals do you think you have been involved with since you started doing you know the fire department currently I'm at nine and ten years okay so that's a lot that's almost like one every year which is pretty crazy we just had a huge one um, in a local community that a gentleman was killed out on a call and hit by a driver and that how many how many different fire departments came to that so, uh, it's over a hundred I believe so that's that's insane like thousands of people for one fireman all those trucks that's that's amazing quite a sight to see I know a lot of community members always come out to kind of see those just to experience it to show your children what you do when a service member or a fire department or a policeman or somebody dies. It's, it's nice to teach your kids that respect. Um, so we're going to talk about a little of the, I guess, ritual or, what's a better word for that, ritual? Tradition. Tradition, thank you, <laughs> for uh, firemen's service. So one of them is where the casket rides. Um, the once I've done, we were just talking about this, I've never had a large truck for the casket riding on. It's usually been a retired gentleman, you know, 90 years old, and they usually bring in the smaller uh, little truck that we can get them up on easily and to take them out to the cemetery. So what truck usually do we ride on? Uh, quite often, uh, departments either have antique fire trucks or uh, their main engines. So the main engines have hose beds on the top that drop out down about two feet to about this level here and so they can set inside of that which is way up if you can see so you almost have to stand the casket on end to hoist it up to people on top which takes a lot of man or woman power to do Jake was sharing that they had to, somebody's casket who'd you build the ramp uh, we somebody's. had the first one I went to is Troy Tayo from Allegan. Uh, they actually had a ramp built off the back that went about 10 15 feet back which is crazy so I but I mean the weight of the casket is a good 200 plus pounds plus the weight of the person and then having to lift that up on top. But awesome tribute for someone to be able to ride on the fire truck to the cemetery. So pretty cool thing. Um, so we're talking about last call. So Jake's gonna explain what that actually is. So last call is something that we do as a dispatch center. Um, each county is different, department's different on the message. Historically, we've always done it um, very certain way in our county. We let the dispatch center know when to do the last call. Uh, we do it the same way we do any type of fire call, signifying that we need to go in service. Um, they do it for the officer that's fallen or the firefighter that's fallen. As the casket's going to lower it in the ground, it'll have a message followed by a moment of silence. And they usually say they almost call out to them and they don't respond and then they kind of say, was it like service out or? Yep. They, they, it'll change different variances of it. Um, usually they'll say it's it's the last call, um, return back to station, so. Yeah, now who draws the short end of the stick on? The dispatch to, center. Having to do that, <laughs> actually speaking during that. Um, it's pretty, pretty moving moment because the um, radios go off and it, it echoes through the radios that they're calling for this person who's, who's now gone, so pretty chokes me up even thinking. Allegan Satchel, two gun planes and plane will fire. This is the final call for Fire Chief Bud Warneman. Thank you for your 65 plus years of service to the people of Gun Plain Charter Township and the city of Plainwell. Gun Plains 101, your watch is over. Allegan Central Dispatch, 1140, that's a click. Another thing they do, the ladder crossing. Yep. Now, I know some of them I've been to have had a ladder crossing and some have not. 
Um, some have been at the cemetery, some have been under, over the road as we're driving to the cemetery. So tell us a little what that is and what that looks like and stuff. It just it goes back to traditions. Um, not all counties have the same amount of ladder trucks. Not all counties have ladder trucks. Uh, we're blessed. We have several ladder trucks in, in our jurisdiction. So um, we can cross the ladders, have a flag going, dripping across them, so we can go underneath the flag. But that's not um, a standard. It's just a tradition that a lot of departments have picked up. Now, who is able to get any of those things? Is it every level of firefighter, or do you have to be a certain, do you have to be a lieutenant enough, or, a, you know? It's uh, it's all based on, on your department. Um, you can get that through through other departments. When we had our, our firefighter, fighter's funeral, we had to get ladder trucks from other departments, and they, they come together. We get different departments to cover our station, so we're shut down they'll run our calls, they bring ladder trucks. So it's just working with everyone, but there's no certain level that it has to be. It's just based on the department and whether they were active or retired. Um, so I'm gonna have Jake tell us a little more about some of the other things, arm badges or you know, draping the, um, the trucks with special items, so. Uh, so one of the first things we'll do in a firefighter possession, uh, the truck that the firefighter's being carried on will be covered in uh, purple cloth over the lights as well as a ribbon on the front bumper showing that that's the truck he's riding in. Uh, we'll put his gear on the front bumper of the truck, his helmet, often the family will ride in the truck. Um, we'll do black elastic bands across our badges to show in a fallen firefighter. We'll often do that for, for quite some time. It's not just the day of the funeral, it'll be the following week. Flags at half mast, obviously. Uh, ringing the bell, so a lot of funerals will have a bell. In the bigger cities, they have a bell that they ring three times at the end of your service, similar to our end of, of uh, last call signal. Uh, honor guard, so and the pallbearers all be in full uniform with their jackets, white gloves, and caps on. Um, and and again, it comes down to a lot of just different uh, traditions. Some do the firefighter's prayer, others do. Um, you know, flags on the back of the truck. Um, sometimes there's, there's stickers. Uh, when we did Chief Ed's funeral, we actually had a sticker on the truck to signify that it was for his funeral. So we carry that with our truck to this day. Now, do you do like veterans a flag that you give to the family or anything that you give special to the family for yep. service? Or? Yep, often they'll get, they'll get the flag uh, that's draped on the gasket. Um, depending on the, the person, the situation, they'll get the helmet. And, and badges. Okay, and I know a lot of times at this funeral home we'll have, with our casket set up, we'll have their boots set out or have their helmet. Um, I've had where the casket uh, arrangement, the flowers have had the helmet kind of laid in amongst the flowers and kind of a whole setup created from that. Um, you know, even though they're a firefighter, they also focus on, you know, it's one little part of their life, so we try not to make the funeral about all about that fire service but it is such a huge part of of their life especially if it was you know how they died possibly even so that becomes a huge part of the service then um talking about cremated remains sometimes families don't know you know what honors they can do or what they can do for a family with cremated remains and how that can kind of work in together so is there any restrictions if the casket's not there or if they're not going to the cemetery, what can they maybe do? No, we, we can, again, we, we set it based on department, so we can make really any tradition at work. So we'll do our best work with the family. Um, if, if the respect is to be cremated, we'll, we'll make that work. They'll still get to ride in the fire truck and last call, everything will be the same. Which they can do, even if they're not going maybe to somewhere, you could do the last call at the funeral home. We've done it right in the funeral home and you know, use the microphone by one of the radios so you can hear it better or had the ringing of the bell there or um, if they are taking those cremated remains to the cemetery you know involving a truck in that transportation so they can still have a lot of those things like Jake said even if they're not going to have their casket present so anything else you can think to maybe include about making that special no, I mean, I think the biggest thing is there's a lot of good resources out there. Um, when we do have a fallen firefighter, we reach out to the county. The county has a lot of 
the purple cloths, the sometimes the ramps we need. They'll they'll supply a lot of it. So each each department, you just gotta talk to the the person in command. Awesome. I know it was. Um, we planned to do this today, and well, I was saying in church this morning, the pastor started talking about 9/11, which is tomorrow, and it never even occurred to me that we were doing this right before. Um, you know, a day that where we stop and we honor not only everybody who died on that day, but especially the firemen and women who ran in it while everybody else was running out. Um, tomorrow, Jake is doing a special stair climb memorial where firemen and women come, they put on full gear and they climb stairs. Uh, and as many stairs as they climb that day, which is how many? 110 flights. Of stairs. So. He'll be doing that tomorrow, so make sure you think about all the guys and girls who are um, paying tribute tomorrow and um, you know giving their day to remember everybody who had fallen um, 14 years ago? 16. 16 years ago, which is crazy. So you weren't doing firefighting at that time, you were too young. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I can only imagine the aftermath of having to do that many funerals and mm. trying to coordinate all that. Um, while that was happening, which took a huge community of firemen and women to come together to provide that service, which is unbelievable. So, if you guys have any questions about firemen um, or firefighters' funerals, um, by all means, send them to me and I'll bounce them off Jake and we'll get answers for you. So, thank you guys so much.